Thank you for joining us to, for another lightning round with the School of Education. Today, our special guest is Dr. Carl Clogges. She is a dyslexia therapist and one of our wonderful professors at the University of Houston, Victoria. October is Dyslexia Awareness Month. And to that end, we want to bring you short clips to help you learn more about what dyslexia is, some common characteristics and things to consider. So today we want to focus more on the adult uh, population. So Dr. Clogges, thank you for joining us today. We want to focus on adults with dyslexia. So can you please share with us how can employers best recognize if they have employees who may be dyslexic? Well, I'm happy to be here today, and I think this is an important topic because um, not only do people who show the characteristics of dyslexia um, have um, struggles in the workplace, but anyone that has just a reading um, reading difference, just a, being a struggling reader, just never got um, a good strong foundation of reading when they were in K-12. So I think it's important to talk about this. And um, I wanna first say that dyslexia is recognized as a learning um, difference. And that is important because our, our federal government has uh, policies about how to work with uh, students and with uh, adult employers in the workplace. So that is important to say. Now, um, adults who show these characteristics, they do not have to disclose. And many times um, they don't because as an adult, they may have learned along the way, and I, I, I get up my quote fingers for this, um, adults that have made it to a job and been working for years, they've kind of learned how to manage their uh, reading differences. And so that can make it a little more difficult to um, evaluate them if they haven't already been evaluated um, uh, as to whether or not they have dyslexia or any other type of reading difference. But one thing that I will say, um, I'm going to share some ideas for people who do have dyslexia and for um, employers that may already know that they have someone with a reading difference. So I'm going to share some ideas so that both parties are aware of um, uh, how we can best serve everyone. So one thing that's important is to allow people and to have someone that has a reading difference to break the day into segments. And what I mean is sometimes um, someone that has um, dyslexia has a hard time focusing. And so it is important to break up their work day and that they focus on one task at a time that does not mean they have a lower intelligence than anyone else. It does not mean that. Um, it simply means that they have uh, more of a struggle to focus. And so they may need to write out a to-do list and prioritize and uh, focus on one task at a time. Now, I will say this. Um, we've got a lot of people out there multitasking in our, in our world. And I do it even though I know you can't multitask and have it be um, quality. Okay, so um, if I am on the cell phone, not driving, if I am on the cell phone and I'm putting on my makeup and I'm also listening to the news, that's doing three things at once. Not one of those things are going to be done well. And that is what research is showing. So really and truly multitasking doesn't work for anybody. Um, so focus on one thing at a time and prioritize. Okay. Someone that has the characteristics of dyslexia does have to plan extra time. And, and let me say how that would work. Let's say you have a report due um, in two days. You know that you've got 48 hours, or not, well, not 48 hours, you've got what a work day is eight hours. So you've got 16 hours to get this report done. You already know it takes you longer to read something, to write something. So you need to plan 25% more time to complete that task. Now, with that said, once you complete that task, you need to wait um, a day or two, which understand time is you know, important um, and you may not have a day or two, but if you write something and it's a report or a memo or something that goes out into the office, you wanna sit on it a little bit and then come back to it and you wanna review it. And when you're doing this review, you want to read it orally and you want to read it silently because um, reading it orally will give you a, a few more hints as to if there's an issue with it. OK, 
Okay. You are going to have to practice your reading. You are going to have to have some note cards nearby so that if you come across a word you don't know, especially one that's related to your field or a certain professional jargon, you need to write that word down on the note card with its meaning so that you can practice that word. And you may feel like, oh gosh, I'm back at school. You're going to have to do that if you have a reading difference and practice those words. Another two things that you can do to kind of lighten the load on you, um, and I don't mean do less work. What I mean is that if you're dyslexic, your brain is having to work harder and longer than someone who is not dyslexic. And so um, some things to kind of take down some of the stress and frustration or headaches that you may feel from this stress is you can work on the lighting in your office, softer lighting or natural lighting. Fluorescent lights can increase that frustration level. Um, it's a little more harsh. Um, also, you can adjust the brightness on your computer screen. And um, I say this for employers because not everybody needs to have the same level of brightness on their screen or the same um, lighting in their office. When I taught public school, and if any of my former students see this, they will be able to say it's true. I used lamps in my classroom, I did not like fluorescent lighting. Um, I didn't have normal desks, uh, the traditional desk in my classroom. I had tables and chairs and couches. And so those types of things can help um, uh, eliminate distractions as, all, as well as um, lower some of the frustration and anxiety that can happen to someone who has a reading difference. Excellent. Thank you. These are great, great tools. As you were talking, I'm thinking about the different things that that I've seen other people uh, as I manage uh, people work through and they do do better when they have different environments. Um, so thank you. That That is very helpful. So thank you for spending some time, some time with us today and sharing some of your knowledge, Dr. Clogges. I hope that everyone is now better educated about what dyslexia is and you've also learned about some of the most common characteristics and how you can help your employees So how you as an employee we can uh, perform better at work. So don't forget, October is Dyslexia Awareness Month. Tune in for more lightning round episodes this month specific to dyslexia. UHV offers a master's degree in special education with a concentration in dyslexia. And we also offer a three-course certificate program. Learn more ab about dyslexia at uhv.edu slash dyslexia. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.